Hello. Thank you for tuning in to this 2022 primary election candidate forum for Legislative District 35, Position 2. This forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County in collaboration with Thurston Community Media and League of Women Voters of Mason County. The League of Women Voters is proud to be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties at any level of government, but always working on vital issues of concern to members and the public to defend our democracy and empower voters. I am Deanne Klein from the League, and I will be moderating this forum. The candidates are Travis Couture, Sandy Kaiser, Tiffany Sevrek, and Patty Case. Tiffany could not attend this forum, so I will read her one-minute statement at the end of the forum. Patty Case could also not attend, and I will be reading her statement at the end of the forum. For this forum, each candidate, in alphabetical order, will have the opportunity to answer a series of questions. The questions will be alternated so that each candidate has a chance to start first. You will also be able to give a one-minute closing statement. Each candidate will have one minute to respond. The timer will show you a sign when you have 30 seconds and then will show a stop sign when your time is up. If you don't notice the time, I will prompt you when, it, when that occurs. So for the first question, I'll begin with Travis Couture. Question number one, what makes you the most qualified candidate for this position? Well, thanks for having us here today. And uh, I'm a program manager for Lockheed Martin. Um, I help manage the fleet ballistic missile program over at the sub base in Silverdale, which is at the top of the district. And we manage a little over a billion dollars in strategic defense assets and um, effort for around 300 employees. And it's a job of strategic deterrence defense that I really um, cherish and I get to work with the Navy and the Marine Corps every single day. Um, I'm a U.S. Navy veteran and uh, um, so I served our country and I, through my job now, I get to continue that service a little bit. Okay. And Sandy Kaiser, the same question please. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us here today and thank you to the League. I would say that what makes me especially well qualified is my deep professional and personal experience serving our nation in a variety of roles and serving our state as well. I spent 25 years overseas as an American diplomat, advancing American peace and security around the world. I negotiated with people that didn't normally agree with us on things, but I was able to find common solutions to tough problems. It really prepared me very well for, I think, uh, for state government. I've also served our state as well as a leading official at the Department of Natural Resources and as a vice president at the Evergreen State College. So I have a wide variety of experiences. I deeply know and connect with our district, and I'm definitely ready to lead. Thank you. So for the second question, I'll begin with Sandy Kaiser. What do you think is the most important issue in your district that the state should address? I believe that our working residents in our district are overtaxed by our state. I think our tax system in, our, in the state of Washington is very unfair to working people. And I think that uh, especially given inflation and the price of gas, the tax relief for working families in our district is really a high priority. That's what I think we could do at the state level to make it easier for working people to support their families and enjoy a high quality of life. Thank you. And Travis Couture, the same question. Uh, I agree with Sandy that um, tax relief is really important for the, pe the working people in our district and all people in our district. Um, I think that there's other considerations as well, such as, um, you know, restoring public safety. Um, we have some of the lowest per capita police in Washington State, and Washington State has some of the lowest per capita police in all of the nation, including Washington, D.C. And when you have you know, only a handful of deputies to cover 
a, a district the size of Rhode Island, like the 35th, um, people want to feel safe, um, but then also they don't want to go to the gas pump and have to pay nearly six dollars a gallon. And um, in the last, in recent years, there's been energy policies such as the low carbon fuel standard, uh, cap and trade, that will probably likely. Um, increase our uh, gas prices considerably more in the coming months. Um, and people are feeling the pain at the pump and that pain at the pump um, increases prices at the grocery stores. Uh, so inflation is a, a very real um, thing that people are having to deal with and we do need tax relief. Thank you, uh, But we haven't got it. Thank you very much. So the third question um, I will begin with Sandy Kaiser and Sandy should the state require local jurisdictions to address climate change in the Growth Management Act comprehensive plan updates yes this is just part of the environment that we live in today we have to we have to consider all of these things as, as we make our plans for the future and you know we we really have a lot of work to do i think in our growth management planning uh, around the district we are a growing district in terms of population and yet we have this magnificent environment that we live in that we choose to live in that we know we have to protect we know we need more affordable housing in the district so it's really important to be making a lot of effort in that regard uh, we have a lot of opportunities i think in in towns like shelter to uh, to build perhaps some multifamily housing so that not only we enjoy a high quality of life here but our kids can actually afford to buy a home and live here as well thank you um, Travis could you the same question please uh, the the growth management act has really helped to devastate our rural communities especially here in the 35th um, there's 13 points to it and uh, environmentalism is one and um, what has happened is some of the other points kind of get forgotten um, rural districts across Washington including the 35th have really struggled and what has happened is um, kind of uh, an erosion of property rights across our rural district and if you go around the 35th especially in Mason County um, Growth Management Act has helped to devastate many property owners along with the Shoreline Management Act. Thank you and uh, this fourth question goes first to Travis Couture and how important is it to you to maintain a rainy day fund in the state budget? Yeah, I think it is important. And uh, right now, um, we couldn't last more than a day with what we have in our rainy day fund. Um, we're, we're actually like the worst in a, of all the 50 states as far as our um, strategic reserves. And uh, that's incredible considering that we had almost a $15 billion surplus in, in the state over the span of uh, the COVID pandemic and they spent it all and we got nothing for it. Um, we didn't get any sales tax relief. We didn't get property tax relief um, when the state had all this money and then they didn't put it into a rainy day fund either. Um, so it is troubling. Uh, we should have a rainy day account that makes sure that we can, um, you know, be safe when we hit economic turmoil. We're about to probably come into a recession here soon and it's going and the prices will be devastating and we don't have any reserves. That's bad leadership and that's bad financial management. Thank you, Travis. Sandy Kaiser, same question to you. We are very fortunate in the state of Washington to have an incredibly dynamic economy. Uh, we know that we have some of the, the world champion companies that are based in our state. And it's, uh, it's due to hard work, it's due to ingenuity of our people. Uh, and that means we do have quite a bit of money coming into state coffers. But I also agree that we really do need to be keeping a rainy day fund. We are living in dynamic, times. We don't know what's around the corner. Fiscal prudence requires that we maintain an adequate uh, balance in a rainy day fund to support really important things like our schools, our hospitals, our roads. Yes. Thank you. And the fifth question will go to Sandy Kaiser. Question five, what is your opinion on the governor's emergency powers and how they've been used during the pandemic? Great question. 
I think the governor has provided solid leadership during the pandemic, and I think we are in a position to really recover. But I don't agree that uh, in emergency power should be indefinite. I think it is up to the legislature now to consider uh, some plan for the future if we are confronted with a similar crisis where we have an, uh, an easier off-ramp when it's clear that the need for emergency powers is diminished. So yes, I would support some kind of uh, curb or clear limit to how those powers would be expanded. Thank you. And Travis, good chair, same question to you. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, we're over 840 days now of Jay Inslee's um, emergency powers. And um, the Republican Party, which is in the minority, has tried multiple times over the last few sessions to do emergency powers reform, that makes sense. Um, but uh, we keep getting stopped by um, either the governor him himself or uh, the Democrats in the legislature who are in the majority. And we need that reform. You, it's not a democracy or republic if one man has that much power in our system for over 840 days. And I would like to see, you know, um, emergency powers that cover natural disasters and things like that for a short period of time. And like Sandy said, there should be a clear off ramp there. But right now that doesn't exist. And um, I'm of the opinion, as are many other people, that those emergency powers should end. Thank you. <clears throat> and we have a sixth and final question that will go first to Travis Couture. Number six, this district covers all of Mason County and parts of Kitsap County and Thurston counties. How do you plan to give the jurisdiction equal coverage given that it has such a diverse population? It's really interesting. The 35th district, when you look at a map, it's almost the size of Rhode Island. It's really big. Um, but what's really great about the 35th district is that it's pretty much all rural. We have one incorporated city, and that's Shelton. And if you go from Seabeck all the way up in Kitsap County, all the way down to Rochester um, and Thurston County, the district looks the same. And those rural values and priorities really ring true throughout a lot of the district. And so um, it's that is makes it, it we're fortunate to have that um, kind of demographic and, and that those values. Um, and really, I think that rural districts like the 35th have been left behind in Olympia. And that's why people are looking for a change in our state government so that our rural districts can be represented. Thank you. Thanks. And Sandy Kaiser, same question to you. Yes, we are blessed to live in a really rural district. And it is, it's been said that one thing we all have in common is many of us have septic systems in our homes. Uh, we don't live in, in towns and we are very dependent on strong public safety uh, measures. And, and that's why I really strongly support fully funding our law enforcement in our rural districts because when you call 911, you want somebody to answer. And that's gonna be the county sheriff. So we really need to train, equip, and support our local law enforcement. That's one thing we have in common, whether we're in Kitsap County, Mason County, or Thurston County. I'm really lucky. I live pretty much in the middle of the district in rural Thurston County. I, I live practically on the Mason-Thurston County line. And it has given me such a wonderful place from which to explore, to connect with folks, and to understand the common sense of rural values that enables neighbors to solve problems together. And that's what I look forward to doing in the legislature. Thank you. And uh, now we have our closing statements and we will begin with Travis Couture. You have one minute. Again, I'm Travis Couture. Um, I'm really happy to be here and running and I get to meet so many great people in the 35th district over the course of the campaign. I'm a dad, I have four kids. They all attend public schools here in, uh, well, actually in Mason County. So right here in the 35th district. Um, I'm a US Navy veteran and I've served our country. And also I'm, endorsed and supported by local law enforcement, the Fraternal Order Police Olympic Mountain Lodge. Uh, they understand um, the issues more than anyone else because they live it and they trust me with their early endorsement. Um, and that's something I'm really proud to have uh, because public safety is such a huge deal right now in our state and we need to give back our police and first responders the respect 
training, facilities, funding that they deserve so that we can continue to make our community safe. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Sandy, Thank we'll you. have the same question to you. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to visit with you today. I'm Sandy Kaiser. I'm the proud fourth generation daughter of farmers and loggers in Western Washington, and I'm a proud Democrat running for this second position. I am new to public service, or not new to public service, but new to running for office, but I've had a distinguished career as an American diplomat. I retired with the equivalent rank of a vice admiral, and I've had the chance to, to work across the landscape and aquatics and uplands and really have a good feeling for our natural resources. I know that we are at a time of change in our district and I believe that I can help bring that change about in a positive way that will bring benefits in terms of jobs, better funding for our schools and more public safety. So I am very eager to serve you in that role. I look forward to it and thank you for your vote. Thank you both. And now I'm going to read a one minute statement from candidate Tiffany Sevruk. To the League of Women Voters and my fellow candidates, thank you for the opportunity to meet and discuss issues at today's forum. Unfortunately, I'm unable to attend due to a previous commitment I made before I came a candidate. To the voters, I'd like to introduce myself as a Curtin School Board Director for North Thurston public schools, and it's an honor to represent the community I grew up in, and I'd like to continue my work as your next representative for the 35th Legislative District. In addition to my experience in education, I'm a small business owner and also worked for over a decade in the state legislature. My background has prepared me for some of the biggest challenges we're facing today, and I bring solutions for education, housing and the state budget. For more information, please go to my website, tiffanysevruk.com. And if you'd like to contact me, my email and phone number are listed there. Thank you. And now I'd like to read a statement from Patty Case. My name is Patty Case, and I'm running for state representative in the 35th district, position two. I grew up in Mason County and spent my entire career in the natural resources industry, advancing solutions that balance jobs and the environment while protecting rural communities. I'm an active volunteer and recently co-chaired a $16 million campaign to build the Shelton YMCA. Our state is headed in the wrong direction. I'm running to help hardworking families keep more of their money make neighborhoods safe, and protect our way of life from failed Seattle policies. Many candidates will talk about these topics, but I have a plan. Cut gas and sales tax, give police the tools they need to get criminals off the streets, limit mandates in our schools, and put them back in local hands. I grew up here. I love this place. I'll listen, work hard for you, and keep my word and I'm asking for your vote. Please visit my website at www.electpatty.com for more information. Thank you, Travis Couture and Sandy Kaiser for participating in this forum, and we thank TC Media for producing it. Ballots will be mailed July 13th and must be mailed or placed in a ballot box by 8 p.m. on August 2nd. You can register to vote online through July 25th at votewa.gov and in person until 8 p.m. at the Thurston County Auditor's Office on August 2nd to vote in the primary. We encourage our viewers to be a voter in the primary election beginning July 15th through August 2nd, 2022.